Scholastic's Animal Friends. Baby animals just want to have fun. How great to be a baby, a baby animal. Every day I find a different way to keep my stomach full. Because it's work being small and fuzzy. This new world never ends. Look a rock and a tree and animals like me. Yes, animals, you are my favorite friends. Animals are, animals are, animals are my favorite friends. And mom is there to lick with care our dirty faces when they end. There's a fox and a bear and a beaver and a pig. A puppy and a bunny, none of us are very big. We try to stand. Hortense Fuzzwaffle, the Curious Rabbit. Under a very large rock in the middle of Shady Cade Forest, something wonderful had happened. Mrs. Fuzzwaffle Rabbit had four new babies. The tiny bunnies were cozy under a soft blanket that Mrs. Fuzzwaffle made out of her own fur. They only peeked out when it was time for meals. Mrs. Fuzzwaffle fussed over her babies as they grew and grew. One day she thought, You've grown into such big bunnies. You'll soon be ready to see what lies past Shady Cade Forest. And sure enough, the Fuzzwaffle babies began to peer out of their home, looking into the world beyond. One of them, Hortense to be exact, was the most curious bunny of all. Let me see, Hortense cried, but all she saw were bunnies and more bunnies. Mother, is the whole world bunnies and bunnies and nothing but bunnies? Oh no, Hortense, her mother said. There are many wonderful things beyond Shady Cade Forest. Can I see them, Mother? Can I? You can, but be very careful crossing the stream and be home before dark. I will, I promise. At the stream, Hortense had a thought. The world looks much larger than I expected. Maybe I should wait till I'm grown up. But with one big hop, Hortense was out in the world for the very first time. And there was something she had never seen before. It certainly wasn't a bunny. What are you? asked Hortense. I'm a turtle, sugar. Oh, a new friend. Come on, let's play. Follow me. Well, honey, I'm much too slow to play with a speedy little thing like you all. And it was true. Hortense soon left the turtle far behind. Now what could that be? thought Hortense. Allow me to introduce myself, madam. I'm a toad and you're blocking my sun. You see, I like to spend my days sunning and swimming and occasionally croaking. Can't you join me? Hortense, however, did not want to just lie in the sun. She was ready for more adventures. And she looked around and heard... It was a furry brown creature who kindly offered Hortense a snack. In between nibbles, she said, I'm on my first adventure and would like to know what you are. I'm a squirrel, and I'm supposed to be saving these nuts for the winter, but they're just too delicious. Hortense liked the nuts, too, but she was more interested in seeing what other surprises she could find. Spying a fence up ahead, curious Hortense slipped underneath. She soon found herself in front of the biggest animal she'd ever seen. Wow, are you giants? We're cows, of course. Stop eating our food, little bunny, and move on along. And Hortense did, very quickly. Now what could those be? Hortense wondered. You're awfully cute. What are you? Want to play? Play? They peeped. Why, we're chicks. 
we've got all this peeping and cheeping to finish, we can't possibly play. Go ask the puppies. So Hortense hopped on in search of the puppies. She took a big leap. And look where she landed. Plop, right in the middle of the puppies' lunch. Hortense was so embarrassed that she pretended she meant to be there all along, but she hopped on as quickly as she could. That's a strange noise, and those are even stranger creatures. They look like monsters. <laughs> Excuse me, please, but this is my first day out in the world. I'd like to know what you are. We are the turkeys. We gobble up everything around us. Hortense didn't know if that included bunnies, but she wasn't taking any chances. She dashed off across the fields and through the stream until all out of breath she saw a familiar sight. I must find my mother to tell her all about my adventures in the world. Hortense, I want to hear all about your wonderful day. Oh, mother, I saw so many creatures beyond the stream. I saw a turtle who was slow and a toad who loved the sun. And a squirrel chomping nuts, and some giant cows who mooed, and some peeping little chicks, and some puppies in their lunch, and some big scary turkeys who gobbled all day long. And can I go back again soon, Mother? Can I? Can I? Yes, Hortense, her mother said. You can have more adventures some other day. But now let's head home, my curious child, to the very large rock in the middle of Shady Cave Forest. Kittens and Mittens. As a kitten and a mitten, I have trouble staying still. I like to rule a cat and from the kitchen windowsill. I'm a kitten who's a mitten, can't stand sitting. I'm a baby cat who loves a pat on the head. I'm a kitten who loves spitting into boxes and mittens. Then I roll around until it's time for bed. As a little Rain Dance, the Shy Little Pony. One dark and stormy night, a baby pony was born. And because it rained all that night, and the next day too, his mother named her new son Rain Dance. He was a small little pony, smaller than the others. Great adventures lay ahead for him, but Rain Dance didn't know it yet. He just knew he was very, very small and very, very shy. Mother, he said, Please don't go too far away. It's raining and thundering, and I don't like it. Come with me, Rain Dance, his mother replied. We'll go to the stable where we can find shelter. And they trotted off together. But even when the sun came out and made everything warm, and the yellow spring flowers blossomed and the air was filled with their scent, Rain Dance was still a shy little pony. He didn't like to do anything but be very close to his mother. They would stay in the field together all day long while Rain Dance learned how to handle his long, wobbly legs. Hey, Mother, look, I'm running so fast. See me, Mother, see me, Rain Dance cried. Yes, dear, said his mother. You're growing up into a very fast little pony. You're old enough now to play with the others. Look at Wildfire and Feathers. They're becoming good friends. Come, Rain Dance, it's time for you to meet the other ponies. Rain Dance followed his mother reluctantly. I don't really want to, he mumbled. But he walked slowly over to where the ponies were playing. As he stood watching them, he thought, they do look like they're having a wonderful time. But they're all bigger than me. I'm just a small little pony. He was too shy to play. And he sat down in the grass all by himself feeling rather lonesome. That afternoon, Rain Dance and his mother went for a walk in the beautiful spring weather. Oh, look, Rain Dance, here's a lovely stream. Come over and see how cool and clear it is. No thanks, Mother. I'll just stay right here on the bank. You go ahead. 
Oh, Rain Dance, his mother shook her head. Why are you such a shy little pony? You're even afraid of the stream. I can't help it, Mother. Rain Dance felt so terrible about being afraid that he finally just gathered up all the courage and jumped right into the stream. To his surprise, it wasn't bad at all. Mother, this is kind of nice. I like the water. He began to play and for a while forgot all about being shy. Rain Dance, his mother said, I have an idea. Let's go see your father. It's a lovely day to go over to the hill where he leads the herd. Rain Dance came running. He loved to visit his father. When they got to the top of the hill, there he stood, a tall, beautiful stallion. Rain Dance felt very tiny next to him. He loved his father a lot, but he was even a little shy around him. Come over here, Rain Dance. You're growing into a fine young pony. Rain Dance told his father all about the afternoon. Mother and I went to a stream. I was afraid to go in at first, but when I did, it felt really good. I'm proud of you, son. That's something you must always remember. Never be afraid to keep trying and trying, even if things look scary to you. As Rain Dance grew and winter neared, his coat became long and furry. He was bigger, but he still preferred to stay alone. All that winter, he spent by his mother's side, trotting through the snow and pawing under the ice for his dinner. When spring came, you could hardly recognize Rain Dance. He was now a handsome young horse, but he was still very shy. Then one night, as the stars were shining and the moon was full, some strangers came to the ponies' field. They thought the ponies were so beautiful that they wanted to take them to their own farm. When they came over to Rain Dance, he said, I don't want to go with you. Please, I'd rather stay here. But the strangers led him into their big truck with some of the other ponies. And they drove off into the night. Where are we going? The ponies whispered. Where could they be taking us? Rain Dance just kept quiet. He didn't like the dark truck, and he hardly knew the other ponies. The next morning, they found themselves shut in a barn far away from their own field. We want to go home, they said, but the door was locked. The ponies were very upset. What are we going to do, they said. Suddenly, Rain Dance remembered what his father had said to him. I must keep trying. I must, I must, he told himself. He kicked and kicked at the barn door. He kept kicking with all his might until all at once, a lock gave and the ponies were free. Follow me, said Rain Dance. Be very quiet so that no one knows we're leaving. He led the ponies down the path, quietly, quietly, and then out through the gate. As soon as they got to the open meadow, they broke into a run, with Rain Dance leading the way. Back in their own field, the rest of the herd could hardly believe their eyes. Why, that's our shy little Rain Dance leading all the missing ponies, they said. I can hardly believe it. We were locked in a barn, and Rain Dance tried and tried till he set us free, the ponies told him. And Rain Dance felt proud. The whole herd was thankful to him for rescuing the ponies, and he didn't feel shy anymore. He felt happy to be Rain Dance and happy to have helped all his pony friends. Peter Puppy's Perfect Present Peter Puppy always meant to be a good little dog. Every day he would make a promise to himself to behave. And for a little while he would. Why, I won't even go chase that butterfly, he thought one day as he lay out in the yard. But sometimes promises are hard to keep, and by the end of the morning, Peter had tracked dirt all over the kitchen floor, knocked over his master's favorite plant, and found a pair of slippers that he couldn't resist. Mmm, those look delicious, Peter thought, and he chewed them to bits. Please, Peter, his mother sighed. Please try to be a good little dog. I'll try, mother. 
Peter thought and thought about what he could do to be good. I know, I'll buy my mother a present. She would love that. And he headed off across the yard and through the fence. Oh boy, oh boy, a present for my mother. What a great idea. But, but which way is the city? Somehow Peter managed to find his way to town. Now what, Peter thought? Mmm, what's that wonderful smell? It smells even better than the slippers I ate this morning. It was the juicy sausage hanging in the butcher shop window. That's it. My mother would love some nice yummy sausage. I'll just slip right in. It smelled even more tempting inside. But the butcher took one look at little Peter and tossed him right out the door. Oh dear, no sausage for my mother, Peter thought. What can I get her? He spied a man carrying some of the most beautiful coats he'd ever seen. Can I have one of those for my mother? He asked the man, but the man just shooed him away. Oh, well, Peter sighed. She already has a very nice coat of her own. But I still need to find a present for my mother. Just then, he saw his mother's friend, Mrs. Wolfenberger. Mrs. Wolfenberger, I need to find a present for my mother. Can you help me? Oh, please, Mrs. Wolfenberger, do you know what I can get my mother? But Mrs. Wolfenberger just told him to get along home. Peter started to head back, but couldn't resist stopping to play in the greatest pile of dirt he'd ever seen. I'll only be a minute, he told himself. But very soon, Peter forgot all about the present and the promise to be good. He played for a long, long time and got very, very dirty. Much later, he trotted happily off to the park. But when he got there, he suddenly remembered. The present! It's too late! I'll never, ever find my mother a present now! Peter was almost in tears. Just then, who should come running up but his very own mother? Peter, I was so worried about you. Where have you been? Oh, Mother, I wanted to get you a present, but I... but I... He couldn't even finish telling her, and sadly, he followed her home. But when they got there, do you know what she said? Peter, don't feel so sad. Don't you know that you are the best present in the world? You are the absolute perfect present. Now be a good little puppy and take a nap. So Peter did. He promised to be good, at least till tomorrow. My Little Chickadee I'm a little chickadee Look around, tell me what you see Time to meet the farmer in the dell Come out of your shell I'm a little chickadee You like to play hide and seek with me Come into my chicken coop for two Here's looking at you I love your feathers, I love your feet The way you hop, ah, the way you eat The way you peck with a funny beak The sound you make when you go peep, peep, peep Yeah, I'm a little chickadee Birds of a feather, you and me But something I just got to let you know Ah, oh, yeah, ah my little chickadee, my little chickadee, yeah. Ah, my chickadee, I love you so. Yeah. The skunk children find a home. Everyone agreed that the three skunk babies were very cute children, but they had one big problem. Sometimes they smelled funny. Everybody laughed at them. Be you, you're really smelly, the other children would say. I don't think we're so smelly, said Josephine, the oldest one. Me either, added Christopher, the middle one. Yeah, what's so smelly about us, little Petunia chimed in. But the truth was, the skunk children became very, very smelly whenever they were frightened. So they played by themselves in the forest every afternoon. 
They pretended they were brave seagoing skunks sailing the great big ocean. But even in the forest, it was the same thing. Phew, what's that? said the porcupine. It's only us, the skunk children, sighed Christopher. I smell something yucky, added the fox. I'm getting out of here. And he scared Petunia half to death. Oh dear, everybody around here thinks we're too smelly to play with. Let's go somewhere else. So they trundled off, first in one direction, then another. Which way should we go, cried Christopher. Everybody thinks we smell funny, and everyone did, even the old owl. Who is so smelly? And the little skunk children just looked at each other. Meanwhile, at a nearby farm, Mrs. Merriweather the cat decided to take a little stroll before dinner. Her little kittens could play by themselves for a while. She headed off to her favorite place, the forest. She liked the cool, fresh air, and there were many things for a farm cat to explore. But she never expected to come across three little skunk children. What are you doing here all by yourselves? Everyone thinks we're too smelly to play with. Well, you can come home with me. And using a special way that cats have, she tried to pick the skunk children up by the back of the neck. It didn't work so well with them, but they were happy enough to follow along behind her, excited to be going somewhere new. On the way home, Mrs. Merriweather had told the skunk children all about her own kittens. And to the skunk's great surprise, the kittens were happy to make friends with them. They didn't even know skunks could smell funny sometimes. Come on, let's go outside, Tiger Merriweather suggested. And so they began to climb out of the box. One by one, the baby skunks and kittens took their turns, each one trying to be the first to get outdoors. And after everyone had fumbled and bumbled and tumbled around, little Petunia took the easy way out. Outside, they had some good rough-and-tumble games. And when Mrs. Merriweather invited the skunk children to stay for dinner, they all shared. You know, if I give them a good bath, Mrs. Merriweather thought, maybe people won't think they're so smelly anymore. And she cleaned the skunk children up right then and there. In fact, Everyone got a bath. After that, it was time for bed. The skunk children and the kittens dreamed together of the wonderful time they would have from now on, playing with their newfound friends. Baby animals just want to have fun. We like to sleep. We like to eat. We like to stand on our own four feet. We are alike and different too, but there's one thing we love to do. We want to have fun. We want to have fun. Baby animals. We want to have fun. 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 We want
A Fawn in the Forest. My name is Lightfoot, and this is me when I was a tiny baby. I had just been born, and my mother started licking me right away. This is my very first bath. Her tongue was warm and rough, and it tickled too, but it felt good to get all cleaned up. When I was only a few minutes old, I began to learn how to stand up. It wasn't easy. I fell down a lot, but it didn't really hurt. I just kept trying till I finally made it, with my mother licking me practically the whole time. I used to follow my mother around to learn all about the forest. I still wasn't so good at running, but I always managed to keep up with her, and she always made sure she knew where I was. Can you find me? I'm hiding in the bushes. I had to learn to be real quiet to protect myself while my mother went to get food. This was a scary day. I heard a noise out in the field. I thought it might be a fox. My mother had told me they meant danger. I just stayed as quiet as I could, hoping he wouldn't find me. When my mother came and scared him away, was I ever glad to see her. Some of the most fun I ever had was playing with all my friends. There were a whole lot of us that had all been born around the same time. We had great games of hide and seek and chase, and sometimes we just jumped and raced around. I met my very best friend that day, a fawn named Daisy. She's still my best friend. This is another friend of mine, Breezy the Bird. She sometimes drops berries and nuts for me to eat. They're my favorite snack. I'm still kind of little here, and sometimes they were very hard to hold on to. But I always managed to get them down in the end. Since the birds were so nice to us, we used to let them have some of our fur for their nests. The first time they pecked some of my fur, it felt funny, but I liked being nice to my friends. I remember my first winter, too. It was beautiful in the forest. When I saw the snowflakes, I thought they were the most wonderful thing in the world. Now it's spring again, and today is my first birthday. Look what I've got, here on my head. They're antlers. They mean that I'm growing up. Soon they'll be like Sandy's over there. And when I'm all grown up, they'll be this big. That's my dad. Doesn't he look great? I want antlers just like his. And when I'm not a fawn in the forest, but a big grown up deer, I'll have them too, just like him. But today is only my first birthday, so I think I'll stay a little fawn for a while longer before I grow up.